Hey guys, Ken Smith from You Know Where. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions through both emails, Facebook, and also the comments on my videos over about the last month about worms, about big worms specifically. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the different types of worms and kind of my belief in which one works best where and also rigging because I, I really rig my worms only one of two ways. So um, let's talk first specifically about brush pile fishing. So when I am brush pile fishing, I pretty much throw one type of worm. And the type of worm I throw is a ribbon tail worm, usually at least an eight and a half inch, but most of the time it's a 10 inch worm. Two reasons for that. Number one, a ribbon tail worm, because of the design, falls really nicely straight down through a brush pile. So usually when you fish a brush pile, you make your cast, you throw it over the top of the brush pile, and you fish it up to the brush pile, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to start pulling it up that brush pile. And every once in a while, one will eat it when you pull it up that brush pile. But you'll feel every time you, t you flip it over the top of something, you drop slack line and let it fall back down in that brush pile. The vast majority of the time, that bite, that bite comes as that bait's falling. So what you want is you want a bait with a nice flash to it. You want a nice big bulky body, not bulky body, a large profile. Let's put it that way. But you want a ribbon tail that kind of straightens out behind that worm and looks like something swimming down through that brush pile. Now, I do not get hung up on color very much at all. I am a plum with blue or green flake guy. Uh, uh, anything in sort of that reddish hue. Uh, blue flake is another good example, which is a little bit darker. But that is the vast majority of what I do. Now, a few years ago, I was doing this up on Lake Hamilton where it's a whole lot clearer. And I was throwing it in a... a um, watermelon candy so something more of a little bit lighter hue but down here in east texas most of the time i don't get hung up on color i've never stood next to a guy that i felt like was getting more bites than me out of brush piles because of color part of that's because of the way we rig it which we'll talk about in a second but to me it's just it's a red there's something about that a blue flag anything in that color now again i think there are probably a bunch of people who make a really, really good bait in this color, in, in this style. Uh, obviously, the Zoom Old Monster. I think Mr. Twister makes a great bait. It's called a Hang 10. And then, of course, just the old standby 10-inch Power Worm. Back in the day when we fished a lot at night on Fork, this was the absolute go-to bait. The only difference about this bait is it's got a quite a bit thicker body, which is why I drop down and either throw that Old Monster or that... Uh, or that hang 10, I just, I don't want quite that much body balled up on my hook when I set the hook. I, if I, when I night fish, which is not very often, this is still my go-to bait, but this to me is a more of a structure bait, structure ribbon tail worm, and I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second. Well, let's talk about that. So structure is when I'm throwing it out off a clay point or a rock point or off the end of a grass point. And there, I want a little bit different bait. I want a bigger swimming action. And, I, and for me, the bait of choice to do that is uh, it's the wild thing. It's just a, it's a much bulkier tail. It's got tremendous action on it. It's got to be thrown with a big weight. If you throw this on a quarter ounce, it just doesn't look right. You want this bait moving fast. This is a fabulous bait. It's made in an eight and a half and a 10 and a half inch. On the, on the Toledo Bend event a few weeks ago when you saw Kevin and I fishing, we were mostly throwing the eight and, ha eight and a half, catching those three pounders. And then when we were trying to get a big bite, we went up to the 10 and a half inch. Again, I don't get too hung up on colors, mostly in the red. And then, so that's a blue fleck. And then they make that African special, which is a real dark color worm. I really like that worm as well, especially on low light conditions. In general, if the sun's high or if it's partly cloudy, I'm going to throw something in a red. If it's cloudy or rainy, or obviously at night, I'm going to throw something much, much darker. Don't get hung up on buying six colors that look almost the same. Those fish don't, they're not paying that close of attention. Doug Hannon once said, from a time a bass is that big, if it's moving so he thinks it's alive and he thinks he can get it in his mouth and he's hungry, he's going to eat it. So... 
I really don't think those fish very often run up there and look at that worm and go, ah, no, I really wanted some green flake in that. They're going to eat it if they're up there and if they're hungry. Now, other non-brush pile style worms I really like throwing are sort of trick worms. So that's the Zoom Magnum trick worm. You guys know Six Sense now makes that bait. Now, the difference in these two baits is the Zoom worm will lay down. It's not a high floater. The Six Sense worm is a high floater. And by the way, if you go back to the Glenn Freeman and Albert Collins video, I went and checked this out after Glenn said this. This is a specialty bait made out here in East Texas. It's called the Double Z Custom Lures, and it's a, also a very high floating worm. So, it's, it's something they're pretty dang hard to find. You can find them down here locally some. I don't think Tackle Warehouse carries these. If they do, I'll stick a link below. But that's a high floater as well. Now, on that, uh, and I'll talk about rigging in a second. To me, that is a bait that typically I rig differently than I would rig a brush pile style bait or the wild thing style bait. Another bait that I throw quite a bit when I'm throwing it out off, out off the structure, and this is a big West Coast deal, is a Yamamoto cuttail worm. Cut tail simply means it looks like it would have had a curly tail, but it's been cut off of there. That worm is really, really similar to me to the Mr. Twister worm. This is to me the most specialty worm. I, my understanding is this is one of Albert Collins' favorite worms. So it's called the 12 inch mag buzz worm. Some guys call that a J tail on there. That bait now you can throw this bait, by the way, in a brush pile as well. This will absolutely work in a brush pile. And one of the things I really like about this bait is how narrow the bait is so you can go to a much smaller hook. I'll talk about that in a second. But that's also a specialty bait. This is probably the only bait amongst all these that I would throw if I threw it in a brush pile and then th turn around and threw it on a point. I wouldn't pick up a different worm. I would throw that worm as well. I cannot explain that bait. You guys saw uh, the guy won maybe the Forest Wood Cup, I think, on that bait a couple of years ago. I want to say that was on Washita. Forgive me if I get that wrong. That's a specialty bait. It's something Mr. Twister makes. It's been, there's other guys, other manufacturers who are making something real similar to that now. But uh, to my knowledge, they were the first one. If somebody's going to argue with me, somebody came out with the first. It's the first one I was aware of was that particular bait. Um, and by the way, Six Sense has a new bait out, which is unlike anything I've ever seen before. I don't have it to show you guys yet. I've ordered it. I don't have it in yet. As soon as I have that, I'll feature that. There's one more bait. Actually, as I've just said that, I'm thinking. There's one more bait that actually Albert Collins put me on this bait as well. And that's that Tomahawk Missile Bait. It's a smaller bait. I believe that is a, yeah, that's an eight and three quarter inch bait. And it's a twin ribbon tail. There are times they will eat that up. And that's a bait that I will just mix in on occasion when I'm throwing other baits and all of a sudden I don't get bit. I'll mix this bait in. This will work in a brush pile. Again, the problem is a little bit you get hung up with having multiple tails on there. But if you throw it rigged right, which I'm about to talk about, it's going to fall through that brush pile. It's also a great bait just throwing out in the open where you're throwing it around grass or where you're throwing around uh, around clay points or rock points. So let's talk just a little bit about rigging there's these baits. So there, to me, there's one of two ways to rig these baits. One of the ways to rig these baits is on a stand-up style head. So if I'm throwing, by the way, it works on the tomahawk bait, but in general, if I am throwing uh, the, uh, a, a high floater style bait or even that Zoom uh, mag finesse worm, I'll throw it on this style of a head. Uh, it comes through just about everything, and to me, it just it's a it's a different look. I, it, it does not always stand up unless you're throwing a high floater. If you throw a zoom on there, it's going to lay down. It's just a different look to them, and I feel like sometimes I get some bites I might not otherwise get. Pretty much otherwise, I got to grab a rod. So generally, I rig them one of two ways. I rig them. By the way, I hadn't talked about this. So some of the newer model of lose rods have that little hook saver right there and it actually excuse me reels it actually just flips back under the reel right there that is so cool to me and it's a way that you don't have to unhook your worm the worm can stay the hook can stay buried in the worm so you're not constantly making that channel which is of course what causes a worm to start coming off the hook but anyway that's just an aside so usually 
I'm almost always 20 pound in Vizex Cigar, and I am all, and this is, I learned this from Albert Collins, I am always a half ounce tungsten weight, double pegged, a peg below, a peg below bobber stoppers, or uh, in this case, six cent stoppers. Uh, double stoppers on top of the, on either side of the sinker, half ounce uh, tungsten weight, that's a six cents tungsten weight. Uh, and then, so this is another one of those things. If you remember, if you, if you haven't seen the videos, I talked a lot about flipping when we had water, high water last year and the year before. And my belief is the bigger the hook, the more potential problems you have in a bush or in this case in a brush pile. So now that particular hook is a five aught hook because we were not fishing, we were fishing offshore, we weren't fishing brush piles. But my belief is if you're fishing brush piles, look, these worms generally, other than that, um, other than the power worm, they have pretty thin bodies. You don't need a 5 aught hook. You don't even need a 4 aught hook. A 3 aught hook will work. Just make sure it's a heavy wire hook. Um, and a 3 aught hook will work. And it, So what you don't want to have happen is you don't want a quarter inch of that hook outside of that fish's mouth. He's hooked from the inside and there's a bunch of hooks sticking on the outside. Because when he then swims by a branch, there's every chance in the world that hook tip gets stuck in that branch and you're done. That fish is lost. You just don't want that to happen. So just like with flipping, when I'm brush pile fishing, I want to throw as small of a hook, usually a 3 aught, as I can get away with, even on those great big worms. Trust me on this. If you'll start doing that, you're going to find you, you seldom lose fish and you're much more likely to get a fish out of a brush pile with that smaller hook than you are throwing a big old gaff in there, four or five aught hook in there. Now, I hope you guys learned some stuff from me. I learned a ton from you guys. Guys constantly share stuff back to me. I'm still in the experimental stage with this, but a guy shared this with me and I am confident in it enough now that fishing the Toledo Bend event the other day, this was the rig I was throwing. He suggested throwing, and I've got, I've only got a few of them. I've ordered them and they're not in yet. So I constantly order stuff from Tackle Warehouse. Exactly the same setup, right? Half ounce tungsten sinker. You see those are six cents bobber stoppers on either end or, or weight stoppers or whatever we call them at six cents. But this is a different hook. This is an owner, it's called a twist lock hook. And the guy, now all I had was five aughts, but it was okay yesterday. We weren't fishing brush piles, but I've ordered some smaller hooks in this. He said it's a bigger gap, and I think he's right. And I'm confident enough to say this right now because I don't have a tournament coming up. I've yet to lose a fish on that hook. Every fish that I've pulled on on that hook, I've caught. So I'm not sure. Now, it's a little bit more expensive hook because it's got that really, really nice uh, center uh uh, screw lock on there, but I'm like 30 for 30 on that hook so far since that guy shared that with me. So that's something new. That's what it looked like. Actually, I'll put a picture right there so you can see what it looks like. But that's something new to me, and I got to tell you, I'm not sure if that's not my new worm hook for brush pile fishing for sure, and maybe even for offshore fishing as well. It's something I had not, I, I actually have had these hooks for several years. I saw them, I bought them. And I hadn't used them until one of my viewers sent me an email and said, hey, you really got to try that hook. It's a real high connection hook. You seemed, he, didn't said, he said, I don't really lose fish on it. Uh, the only other thing I'll tell you about fishing in brush piles or actually any deep water worm applications is I really believe rods and reels make a big, big, a big difference. This is a brand new rod to me. Uh, I just ordered this rod and got it, and I got to tell you I love it. It's a CMHC but it's only a $150 rod. It's a seven and a half foot heavy action worm rod. Really, really like this rod. Uh, but the other thing I'll tell you is buy high speed, speed reel. So that's an extra wide spool reel. This is my reel for offshore because I want to throw it a long ways. It holds a ton of 20 pound line and it's a high speed. It's an over seven to one reel ratio. Two reasons for that. Pick, fish picks it up and starts running at me. I want to gather that slack. And as always, we've talked about, any time I'm reeling that bait in is wasted time before I make that next cast. So if I can pick up 20% faster of, of real speed, just reeling that worm in to make that next cast, 
I may get an extra 30 casts a day and I may catch an extra fish or five fish a day just based nothing else than on the speed of my reel. My brush pile reel is that LFS reel. I've talked about this reel a lot. It's really become my favorite go-to reel. Um, it's a TP1HA is the reel. Uh, this particular one is not a real fast one, but usually I'll, well, it's a 6 8 to 1, so that's probably as slow as I would throw in that application. So that's sort of my thoughts on big worm fishing. Uh, obviously, by the way, uh, congratulations to Derek Mundy again down at Rayburn. That dude is just crushing them. Uh, he and uh, Clay Phillips, I believe, are the two guys that just seem to be winning everything. Uh, we were on Toledo while they were on Rayburn, uh, again, just whacking them out of brush piles. So congratulations to both those two guys and uh, super job through this summer, really either being on something different or having a set of brush piles nobody else is finding because those guys are just consistently catching mid to high 20s out of brush piles and they're very likely doing it on something I just showed you. So thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, we've got obviously more fishing videos coming up. If you don't know my channel, uh, along with stuff like this, I post a lot of Rayburn and Toledo Bend and other East Texas Lake fishing reports. I post at least twice a week. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. This has been a fun journey for me the last two years, and I look forward to continue doing it with your participation. So we'll see you guys again very soon. Thanks. Hey, boys and girls. Clint and I are here uh, doing a little mapping this afternoon. There's the Castle Boykins boat ramp. And... Uh, Yo, Big Nasty has shown back up. So there she is right there. There. Doink. See? Don't break my rod, <laughs> you redneck. All right, so I'm going to give you all a waypoint on that real quick. That one, it's been here several years. I don't even have it marked anymore. Let's see, mark it. Point two sixty four. Edit. There you go. Thirty one twelve seven ninety four by ninety four twenty one one eighty seven. Thirty one twelve seven ninety four ninety four twenty one one eighty seven. And it is a four reel. Where'd it go? Oh, you got my mail on top of it. Super. Oh, there it is. It's a for real. Don't drive right over that. And what is that? Four hundred yards. All right. So it's just dead out here in the middle, and there's nothing on it. There you go. Another benefit of being with Pinsmith Fishing.com.